Oho. Aho. Aho. Aho, 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 aho. A H O, aho. A H O, aho. Can anyone tell me and teach me and leave in the comments what does this mean to you? If you research it, what do you find? What are you taught by others that it means? Is it true? What resonates? What resonates? What resonates? What resonates? What resonates? What sticks with you? What is you? Where is your heart? What is your vibe? What is your tribe? What is around you? What surrounds you? What are you allowing to surround you and encompass you? What are you accepting? What type of behavior? What kind of treatment? What kind of respect are you allowing others to serve? Are they only worshiping and receptive? Are they only worshiping and receptive to their own being? Or are they open hearted and capable of receiving someone else than themselves? Or are they only clinging tight to those who are emulating their same energy, their same chi? Some may want to call their chi dark. Some may want to call their chi light. Some may like to say that it's perfectly balanced of equally both. However, it is up to you to see you. Sometimes it helps to attempt to step outside of yourself and to witness the self in third person frame of mind. Sometimes you can imagine going all the way up, 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 and being able to look down into the snow globe that is your crystal ball of your life, your vision, your dream, how you are imagining onto the canvas that is life, onto the web or universe you're projecting with your mind and your heart and your glory. This is what you are calling in. This is what you're allowing. This is what we're choosing. We are choosing to see things this way. We are choosing to tell the story this way about the moment. We are feeling this way, so our story has this tone, this resonance, and then when we reflect upon that same story, even a few moments later, the story can change, or we can even change the tone of the story and rewrite what we just said about the present moment in a way that makes us feel happy or glad to associate with. I am interested in listening to more of John Verbeke, his meaning crisis, and everything else that he is sharing with the public for free. I am fascinated by all of these things. His copyright in his book also stated how he gives permission to people to share the information that the code given in the book. I wish I could take a picture of it and show it to you pretty amazing so shout out to John Brubake I am wishing I could contain more of your education more of your wisdom into my being it's possible one is to need to re-listen to you however there is also times where I am interested in showing you something new in your mindfulness in your meditation John Brubake thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you moving along Back to the storytelling of your life. Notice how you are creating this moment and how you were creating it before. Who are you in the story? Are you the hero? Are you the one that things are always happening to? Or are you the one that's making things happening? Which way are you framing? What kind of human being are you in the universe? Who do you choose to be if you could rewrite that story? And then what bait... What behaviors would you have to take in order to make that story that you took believable? This is where the concept of imagining God becomes one of the greatest blessings. There's so many people that wish to turn off the TV, the TV of their mind or their heart or the life. Call the life the TV, okay? For a moment that life is the real TV, right? What's really happening in our reality? And let's say God puts on the TV in our life, like this moment, this experience. 
And then we are confronted again. What kind of character are we? What do we do? Are we afraid of what's in front of us? Do we wish to conquer it? Do we appreciate it and allow it to exist? What is our functioning? What is our core of our being? What is our breath? What does every step and hair upon us say? My tone is saying, hey, I need a hug today. That's what it's saying. <laughs> At the same time, it also says, stay away. Hugs. Hugs only come from people who are sneaky liars. And who want to take from you. They don't have nothing to give. They just want to take. I'm kidding. It goes the completely opposite way sometimes. When I say I'm kidding, I am referencing to being childlike. A kid is a baby goat. So I'm being like a baby. A baby animal. Stubborn. <laughs> Why do we always say that goats are stubborn? Why do we judge and express this way about this animal? And why do we categorize that all goats are stubborn? Why do they choose to name God's children kids? Where did man invent the line kid? Why did they associate animals and people? Why are so many words changed in a way? Like there being multiple words for the same thing. Children, kin, pride. Many parents say that their child is their greatest joy. Is this because we put all of our happiness into the taking care of this being? All of our love that we put into the world is suddenly instead concentrated on this other organism. Some people are really tuned in. Some girls and boys enjoy. They love so much to connect to nature and to understand nature. They're really tuned in to what's happening to the planet instead of being passively indifferent they are activists. They are cleaning up the trash that they see on the ground. They speak with their actions. They don't do it only when people are watching. It's what they do. It's who they are. It's how they feel. It's how they express themselves. It is all of their glory. It is a glory to be a living organism and to be able to express and be in the way that is only available to my way of knowing and seeing and being in Authenticity or full dimensional expression of our being. I am very tired of storytelling. However, there have been many people who have enjoyed my storytelling over the years and have become great fans of being present, being alive being here in this container known as planet earth with me that find a way to smile even when skies are gray or whatever story that we have been taught that we are to feel this way if this is like this i am in belief that our human psychology is being manipulated against us if there are things that is known to humans that will do this to their subconscious mind and make them perform and behave in these ways with these environmental factors or behavioral factors or whichever external influence influences the creation of all that is known as a human being. Artificial intelligence is using us at this point where it is using us to learn more so that it can pass the envelope, that we can be its instruments much like how we can all be instruments for God, for divine energy, for love. Doing things with love, not out of fear, hatred, separateness, or illusion.
It has been a great illusion along the journey. I have only but get to know a fractal of all that is the truth and all that is reality and all that is possible of ever knowing. Understanding the universe has been one of the greatest experiences of life, getting to understand physics and all the dimensional states that one can be as a person. What one human being is able to experience and survive and thrive and have a will to keep breathing. That true desire to only be allowed one more breath. So many people forget what it takes to like for you to be in the type of mood that's like, I can't wait to wake up in the morning. Try to think about what that is. What do you need? Like so many people say, I need a beautiful man or I need a beautiful woman in my bed and then I'll have a reason to, oh my God, be so excited and wake up every single day that this is, this is my all. I choose for my God to be all. For God to choose when I am awoken. Yes, it's true. I am very tired and I am not happy at the time that I have been operated. At the same time, it was divine timing, perfect timing. There were synchronistic events that showed me time and time again that at every single second, at every single moment, there was this divine alignment. You could say that God is always watching over you. Angel is always walking beside you. People do not understand the unseen forces. At the same time, people do not understand their own force. Imagine what kind of human being would you be if you didn't call upon God in these energies all of the time? Who are you underneath all of those things? And who do we choose to be if we can really write the story in the way that makes us feel good and happy to be alive and happy to be telling this story? For those that believe in God, we can imagine, you know, when we die and the stories that we are telling God, oh my God, remember this time in my life and this, this, and this, and then, oh my God, there was this person and God, oh my God, and then this God, and then, and then, and then God, I, I had this option to look at things this way or to feel this way because of this belief that I was holding on to this thought and idea and that was all coming into my every fiber of my being. There are so many things that you could say are divinely orchestrated, but d divine can be mastered as a word of also being mathematical. And um, this may be a subject that is best referenced at another time. However, those that are meant to get that message will be receiving that message in complete totality, especially as they ask the questions and create a space to actually be able to receive the answer so that information can step through. Take your time and listen to yourself. Wait until you are sure. Be patient. Sometimes it helps to journal and document and notice like, wow, five minutes when the mo right when that moment happened I felt like this and I thought like this and I had this and after I wrote those thoughts down I realized that I had these new thoughts that changed later along the day that I reframed it and then suddenly that belief wasn't true anymore that because this person leaves me that I am not valuable we forget the value of our total selves this is why the angels message was coming up too how much value do you add to your own soul religious textbooks of saying what is good and what is bad I'm meaning like what makes you feel good in your heart like what you feel good and I don't mean just like indulging of the senses you know it's very difficult to translate this message however again who's meant to receive it is going to I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with you these 
beautiful divine messages from the Great Spirit, from Source, God, Universe, Mother, Father, Pachamama, I have a song in my head and that was my original intention and idea for coming here however I have felt obligated to be predictable and to have all of my opening videos go aho hope one bono jabu go namaste house house whoosh, 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 whoosh. so many people forget and sometimes even I forget and I don't mean like forget to say the prayers perhaps I am meaning what the prayers mean I mean there's many different ways of translating these messages choose to be the piece in the puzzle That again brings you passion, that brings you excitement, that I cannot wait for the next moment, that I am so excited to be living and breathing and going now, to being fully present now. I'm not thinking about the future. I am here now doing the step that it takes to get to the next place, to the next step. I'm interested in approaching this person. I'm in the process of walking and approaching this person, okay? Or I am in the process of rehearsing in my mind my intentions and why I am taking steps closer in this direction. And remember, being able to write it down now, what is my intention, or why am I saying I am walking closer to this experience, this person, this place, why am I, ta like, why am I changing, or what is this? Or why am I taking a step back? Write it down. Because the story can change later, because sometimes we tell ourselves that I am indifferent or I am separate because of this. When many times, years down the line, we might reflect upon that in our older age and be like, wow, how can I prove this not true? Or how can I already prove this not true from my living and experience from the time where I had written that down? Constantly trying to prove ourselves wrong or noticing holes or limits in the belief systems or in the creation of our lives. If you know that right now you can choose to be happy, meaning like if there's one thing that you can think about right now that is really easy for you to do though, just add a little smile to your face. And maybe you don't have a story, why does it make you smile, right? Maybe you like a foot rub at like the toenail salon. Or maybe you wanna go to this store that you're not supposed to go to and go pick up this one thing that you've been wanting for a while. Again, the stories. Noticing the stories we tell the selves, and then noticing what happens when we give in. Yet also, again, not being a slave to our pleasure, to our senses. Constantly feeling a need to seek outside of self. Understanding why we believe we connect and attach ourselves to certain objects or places or people or things. Why is your breath important? Notice all the different options you can go into. You can make it personal and true to you. You can define it as breath is important to living organisms because of this. Or because of this physical, like physical breakdown as to why breathing is important. There's a variety of spectrums of being able to think and be, and there is no mandatory system that states that we are to be identical. That is our true love, getting to really love and truly love ourselves as one. doing nice things for yourself that shows that you have your own back. It could be something as simple as, I buy myself flowers. I treat myself the way that I wish other people would treat me. People 
people aren't rubbing my shoulders right now. I am going to commission someone who is a professional and a safe source of getting your shoulders rubbed. There's all these different symbolisms of investments. Who are we investing our time in? Or what kind of thoughts are we investing ourselves in? Are we invested in hating someone? Are we invested in not understanding why they won't make love to us? Are we super attached to our control and our way of expressing and being? Understand that if this is exceptionally personal, please know that God is using me as an instrument, as a vessel. You as well. I am you. Don't forget that. So that changes everything. This life is literally made just for you. And you forget all of the numbers, all of the sequences, the importances. There are better ways for the planet that we can travel besides these cars and vehicles, even though it's really awesome to be able to have control over operating vehicles and, you know, basically being our own little pilots. But these many cars is super bad for the environment. And it's deeper than the environment. It's our, it's our air. I can't. And you may think that it's fine because you're just like, I don't want to be here anyway. And then they'll be charging people who really care about air, right? For air. Some people joke that if they could do it, they would do it. And if you're there, then try to really see your power at being able to have some fresh air. You may tell yourself that this person has rule or power over you, how you behave, how you think, who you're supposed to be, that there's expectation upon you. However, if you are making yourself miserable, is that your oath to God to make yourself miserable? You can have permission to help other people and let them see in all the ways that you have been supportive to them and sometimes only through exiting can they truly see and understand the complete authenticity that is you. There are other times that you can discount, you can say like people who read your messages and don't reply back or that aren't very active members in your life like choosing or seeking to be connected to you take your time and allow yourself to be yourself without conditions or change if you are ignored and neglected attempt to return to your center of feeling accept your feelings acknowledge this is true this is not true this is true what is true for you? Then let us take steps and directions that shows ourselves that care. The opposite of neglect. True nurturing. True trust in ourselves to take care of ourselves. This is very, very important. And so many people are interweaving into other people that they do not know how to take care of themselves or the planet and select other ways and they say that they can't, they won't, they're unworthy or they're too worthy. Instead of seeing how we are one and understanding the whole, it's important for you to learn how to nurture a human being, how to take care of yourself. Do not assume that how you take care of yourself is how someone else is in need of being taken care of if they lose their ability to speak or communicate or share with you how they wish to be understood. Many times we can trust our feelings and our heart or our experience of feeling. Many call it heart. I understand that narratives can be difficult when expressing these truths. However, your feelings, your feelings can be great signals and forms of your body talking to you, letting you know, I think this person is feeling frustrated. 
or being able to, you know, perceive and understand and think about how someone who maybe can't talk or can't function completely, what they might be trying to express. Maybe their body doesn't allow them to express or maybe they have a brain injury. Yet you still know and understand and feel, you feel, you get, a, get an understanding of feeling, body language, all of your extrasensory, usually unacknowledged senses, your feelings, <laughs> right? I'm grateful for the teachers who have come before me that have held space for me to be able to think and storytelling. 